Okay, uh, here we are. We're back playing Ruby and Rusty Save the Crows by Max Oakland. Uh, he recently just released uh, a beta 3. Um, let me take you to the itch.io page. And let me get rid of that. So, yeah, I, I don't know what's been changed. I know that there's been some things that have been... that there's been some changes, but I don't know what, because there's no new development log and there's no change log. I think uh, it was nice that you, you name the new file, which is good, but it would be cool to know precisely what has been changed, because uh, I'm going to go into this now, not really knowing uh, what to look for. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm eager to see what has been um, what has been done since I played last, which was only yesterday, actually, but anyway. Um, that's fine. So let's go back into, back into this. I'll move this back in so I can see what I'm doing. And we'll give it a shot. Ah, this is new. We're already into new stuff. I don't recall this happening. Once upon a time, there were two vegetables named Ruby and Rusty. They were very good friends with the crows. They were also friends with the garden scarecrow. And they all lived happily together on the farm. But one Halloween, Ma and Pa dressed the scarecrow up. And they gave it a funny witch costume. Nice. The, uh... It's very... It's a nice drawing. I think, like, the... The color palettes need a bit of work because, um, you know, it's got the, the 8x8 pixel squares making it look a bit crunchy. But I think that's an easy fix, right? Uh, it transformed and started terrorizing the crows. It's, it's, uh, in keeping with the theme of scarecrows, they, they scare crows. The crows got scared and flew away to hide. Well, Ruby and Rusty won't stand for anyone being mean to their friends, not even their other friends. So they're going to they're going on an adventure to save the crows. Uh, nice, nice. Okay, cool. This is also new. Oh, we don't want to touch this guy. So this is like a section where you can familiarize yourself with the movement a bit. That's good. Positive change. Don't touch that. Um, so this is an enemy. Uh, it seems like it's an enemy. Like he looks kind of funny looking. Uh, are you trying to say that, you know, don't touch things with eyes on it? Um, if so, maybe make it diff a different color palette to the things that I can't interact with. So it's just kind of clear that there's a different functionality. Let's press down. Nope. Oh my goodness. It's like Mario 2. So I, I just pressed B then, um, and I picked up a turnip. Oh, that's great. I see what you're doing now. Great. Um... It's like a, it's actually like a dream sequence, right? That's why you haven't colored the, um, the enemy. I kind of get it now. Actually, I, I do like that. That's really awesome. Okay, so it's like a tutorial. So that's bouncing. I remember doing the bouncing on other, uh, on these things. Um, when I played yesterday, that's really great. This is, this is, uh, this is very nice. So is this like a dream sequence? Like in Super Mario Land, uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, spoilers. And here we have, yeah. Okay, the fact that you, okay, in the, in the previous playthrough, um, I struggled with 
having to walk off a ladder and then you know you drop down immediately and you always had trouble dealing with the enemies that were inevitably going to be kind of hugging the ladder below you and you'd get hurt um the fact that you can walk off the top there fixes that issue so it's great and now we have a crow and we're going to save it um that's really nice that's a really nice intro it's a it's a massive improvement to um to what we had before which was you know you're presented with this map immediately and um you can pick a hard level which i know the barn was a really hard level compared to say the farmhouse which was a really good introductory level um so you've addressed the you've addressed some of the problems there which is, which is a really great improvement uh i w i was thinking about the driveway let's go into the driveway Looks like we have a bug. I've picked something. Okay, so we've been working on these uh, tumbleweeds. Enemies have eyes. So we picked up on that in the little dream sequence tutorial thing. Um, yeah, much better. Much better. So originally they were kind of coming at you and it was just like lots of information. They're, they're kind of, they're rushing at you. Um, you're trying to deal with learning. This was the level I played first, by the way. So I was trying to deal with the with learning how my player character moves, um, and also just like dealing with these things just rushing at me, and it was very chaotic. But in this iteration, uh, everything's much more calm and collected. This is that uh, serves as actually quite a nice. I can't quite reach that unless I do a jump up here. This is a much more relaxing. Um, kind of easing into the whole game um now i was thinking about this driveway sequence before and i know you've got the the let's have a look here can i i can't I couldn't reach that damn i wanted to get all the flowers i was thinking about the this driveway sequence before oh, i've got another chance um and I know that you've done the dream sequence now and you've, we've, we've had a chance to familiarize ourselves with the movement and done a little bit of tutorial. That was great. But what if you still did uh, another level um, before you jumped into the map, map selection screen and it was the driveway, like you're coming into the farm, you're entering the farm through this first level. Um, you know, just to kind of double down on making sure everybody, I missed the flower making sure that the player is well accustomed to how the player character moves. Just an idea, just a thought. I still think that you've you've improved the, the beginning of the game vastly. Oh, and now we have um, an end of level screen, full health, no. Okay, so there's actually like kind of achievements. I want to try and... Does it remember? So you got to kind of complete this by getting all of the flowers. Dang it. It'd be nice to have a restart. If, if somebody's replaying and they want to get 100%, um, it'd be nice to have just a flat out restart from this menu would be nice. Oh. So this is a totals, I believe. Let's have a look. So that was um, that. Was that. Canned peaches are health. Okay. So there's a, there's a whole bunch more going on. I'm not sure if I was aware that this is a beta. I know that you've done version three beta. So um, I'm well aware that this is not even like, you know, in a state that you would be prepared for people to, to say, hey, this is, this is kind of done and playable. Um, you're more interested in feedback in this stage, at this stage, I, I suppose. But yeah, onto the peaches. It's cool that there's obviously canned peaches somewhere out there where I can I can get uh, health refills. That's awesome. So uh, this looks like an eyeball or blueberry bomb. So there's lots of mechanics um, here. That's kind of hard. That that section here is where you kind of sit here, and it's the same again here. It's not so bad. Very twitchy. Yeah. 
Now, let's try and... What? That's fine. Let's move on to another level, because I don't want to kind of spend my whole time just trying to get 100% when I'm supposed to be giving feedback. Let's go back to the map. Please. Uh, what else can I find that's new? I think your triggers, I'm just looking at the triggers. So when, when I'm not hovering over something, it closes the fist. And when I am, it'll point. See how like it switches. There's like this visual change between one and the other. I'd like to see that across everywhere. See like here, just so I'm certain that I know uh, precisely what I'm clicking. So I'm not sure what I clicked there. Probably the, probably the well. I don't want to talk about the well um, because last time I had like a hard time with it. Oh, I can pick the turnips up now. See, I'm pretty sure I would have been able to pick the turnips up before, right? Uh, and I just wasn't aware of it. I thought they were just the kind of neat graphical element. Um, so here we are. Now I can throw stuff. Um, yeah, see, last time I thought to myself, you know, I'm falling really quickly. Uh, it's really hard to deal with information coming at you when it's uh, coming at you so quickly as a result of the falling. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do a falling down the well stage. Um, what if I was kind of thinking about how I would approach this, this level. Feels great throwing turnips, by the way. It's really cool. Uh, I would do something similar to some of the levels you find in Super Mario World. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a straight drop. Like you're just falling down the well and maybe there's enemies that are slowly coming up from below and you have to just avoid them. Um, it's not platforming, but it's a change of pace. Uh, you certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want this to be the first level that a player plays because it's, you know, it's kind of a new, you know. Well, hi Vyond, how are you? Hopefully I, that, that message is, hasn't been sitting there for minutes. That's good to hear. I'm glad that you're well. Um, I am just giving some feedback to Max Oakland uh, with his game Ruby and Rusty. Good, good. That's, I'm glad that I, I wasn't ignoring you. Uh, so yeah, I'm talking about um, the well level. No, Max isn't here. It's just you, I think. Um, he's just asked me to, to have a look at his game, so uh, here I am. Um, so as I was saying with, with the well, it's, you know, you're dropping down, you're, there's lots of information coming at you uh, and it's just kind of really discombobulating and you're getting, um, it, it's difficult to deal with. So what I would do is I would think of the Super Mario World levels where you're just falling down, uh, trying to trying to avoid things coming at you from below, but it's not, you're not falling at a rate where it's just like too fast to deal with. It's, it's, it's slow enough that you can actually react. Um, uh, and in that way, I mean, you could like, if, if things are coming at you really quickly, then maybe you could do like a flash, um, you know, like the, the second level, no, third level of Battletoads on the NES, um, Turbo Tunnel. It's got like, things coming at you really quickly, but uh, it'll give you a visual flash of precisely where that thing is gonna come so you can get a moment to prepare yourself. Uh, I think that would be really neat in a level like this. Um, and that will kind of solve the problem of falling down in a platformer and just going like, you know, if I fall down here, bang, on spikes, does not feel good. And also that, I, that ghost i love the ghosts they're the kind of thing where you would have them uh coming up from beneath as you're falling um but they are coming at you really quickly in this instance um and yeah see i twitched a twitch platform to off the edge and fell into spikes um so the fail state is uh, an instant kill when it was a small mistake um and people will get frustrated when they're playing. 
let's go back to the map. Uh, what else did I have? Let me look at my notes. I made some notes um, because I'm that kind of guy. Uh, checkpoints. Yeah, I brought up. I was thinking about checkpoints. Um, the game is, in some instances, it's there's levels that are quite tough compared to others, like the barn. Uh, and you know, maybe if if there's instant kills, I know that the spikes above here, they're instant kills, uh, which is fine. Oh, these are a different color. Therefore, they probably hurt you. No, they don't. In the last iteration, um, they had no collision. Uh, it seems to be the case here too. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Spikes. Uh, I completely forgot. Vion, what was I talking about? Can you help me please? <laughs> I was talking about spikes in some way. Um, oh yeah, checkpoints, that's right. Uh, so the spikes are insta-kills. It would be nice to have... No, that's fine, so did I. I got distracted as well. So, you know, we're in this together. Um, uh, it would be nice to have uh, checkpoints where there's the insta-kills. You could just like kind of be spawned back in um, so that it's not so devastating when you do make a small mistake and, you know, have insta-kills. Also, these are really hard jumps. Um, Check out, I'm going to do some some drawing with my mouse um, just to kind of explain some stuff. So that's, it's fine to do these, but you know, what, what I like to do when I'm designing levels is, uh, if I go to my full screen, is in that instance, I would kind of start with, you know, a pit and then just put, the vine there so that when the player does jump it's it's a very easy jump and you know a, pit, a thing that's in a pit is like hey probably don't touch that don't fall in it so easy jump uh, and then later you would kind of go okay now it's time to to up the ante and you know do harder jumps That's um, that's what I would do. Let's go back to the game. Just so it kind of eases people in, um, especially if you're doing the non-linear gameplay where it's like, you know, if they pick this level first, uh, it's already got a jump that is, I mean, to be honest, it's not a hard jump, but still um, the player may still be trying to familiarize themselves with how everything moves. Can I get hit by this guy? Yep, I can. So, good. This is going to be a really hard level now. Okay. So, we'll just kind of relax. Got that. So, yeah, this this flower, I want this flower. I want it bad. Uh, but if I fall down there, I'm going to have to jump. I can only jump up. And I don't see how I'm going to be able to get there, like do that safely with this guy right here. You know, like, how, how am I supposed to get that without getting hit? Same again with these insta-kills, insta-kill spikes. I don't, I think that it's kind of pretty full on to have the player try and jump over these. Um, if you hit him on the side, it's insta-kill death. And so it's very easy for a player to make a small mistake. And... Is there like a, a an auto clear? If I deselect all, yeah. So again, if I was to do the spikes, it would be way better to see them do that. Just so that there's no chance. I mean, the player can still fall in, uh, but there's just no chance that they'll hit from side to side. And so a small mistake isn't so punishing. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, you, you can do it this way, it's fine. It's just that, it's just so punishing when someone just kind of screws up a tiny little bit and they get the insta-kill death from the side. 
Um, in the old iteration, you had bugs here too. And so it was really hard. You would, you would land on a bug and they would throw you a little bit left to right and you would just fall on the spikes and it was just super crazy. So it's great to see that they're not there. This is a hard level um, comparatively to other stuff. So yeah, with the non-linearity, hey, I've got a turnip here. Oh, it's not a turnip, it's a heart, it's a health thing. Yeah, it's really good. I, it's, it's great that you've added the tutorial at the start that lets people know that, hey, you can actually deal with collecting stuff. Get a turnip. It pops back up. Hey, I've got a different palette. Why, why is that? What does that mean? If I pick that up again, how come I had a different palette? Not really sure what's going on there. Okay, great. The fact that I can get, like get out of this climb state and get control back with, of my player is really good. So you've solved lots of problems with that. Um, again, this area here, oh, I could have timed that better. Um, this area here used to have uh, an enemy that was going around the bottom top side. Uh, you've removed that. This is a, a massive improvement to last time. Oh, I wanted to keep going. There was a platform there. It might be a bug with the engine mod. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, I don't blame you for that. Full health, yes. Flowers collected, no. Um, this is significantly better. Significantly better, this iteration of the game. Well done. Uh, what else? You know, I was, I was thinking about the, the tree level. Oh, there's a nice little intro there. That's quite cool. I was thinking about the, this this level and the fact that it's really fun to bounce on these. Um, what are these? Are these like tree sap, you reckon? That's what I'm kind of get, gathering. That or honey, although honey would kind of, you would stick to it, right? Um, they're really fun, really fun to move around with and, and just jump on. So I was thinking about how I would implement them and I feel like, you know, what if you did like a Donkey Kong Country 2 thing where it's like entering a beehive. And I know, you know, you would stick to these if they were honey, but you know, it's a video game. You can kind of do whatever you feel like sometimes. Um, and then just kind of populate that place with heaps and heaps of them. So the whole level is just jumping around, leaving lots of head height. So there's no bonking head. Cause that's, that's, um, I don't like that. Let's have a look and see what you've done here. So. Oh man. See this turnip was here last time and last time I had the this horrible problem. It's also been fixed. I had this horrible problem where you know you would you would press left in an instant and the player character would just fall down and get owned by that worm. Um, in this situation, not so much because it's kind of sometimes happening, but sometimes you're also snapping into a, a, a walking state too. So things are already looking better, but the turnip is there. So that section is actually fun now. The fact that I know that I can use the turnip. Here's, here's something. This is what happened last time down here. So the worm follows you. And I was thinking, hey, you can actually kind of manipulate him to be on this side so that when you do climb up, he's well away. Um, so you can do that, but that's that's kind of a, a pro move in my opinion. A lot of people wouldn't really realize that that's an option. Um, I only realized that after the fact, having thought about how I would deal with that situation. Um, certainly not while I was playing did I think to do that. Oh, I failed. Does it, it respawns though, right? Not in this instance, maybe? The turnips just make the game so much better. OK, 
Okay, cool. Um, more improvements. You used to have this B slightly lower and you had another B that was like here. So that when you came up, it was just like, you were just bum rushed by enemies and it was confusing and I died and I actually decided I had enough at this point and I got out of the level. Here, uh, you fixed it. There's there's a single enemy. There's plenty of time to, to see and watch what it's doing before you have to deal with it. And oh, it's it's still it's still pretty gnarly. I think that like it's it's loads better, but I think that the fact that the platform could probably be moved over that top platform just there could be moved over to here, so that there's not this kind of mad twitch trying to get through that that tight gap from left to right. Um, yeah, see how much easier that is. You, you don't even need to manipulate them anymore. You can just kill them. It's so much more fun when you can just, um, when you take it easy on the player and just, just let them, you know, jump on stuff. Oh, the bouncer hasn't spawned in. Maybe I can get around by doing this. Not so much. So there's a bit of a glitch that, that breaks the level. Um, but yeah, these are there's, there's lots of improvements. Uh, what else? I mentioned last time, um, you know, putting a, a star difficulty up the top um, in the HUD. Uh, you could also kind of have that pop up only when the player, you know, this pointer hovers over it over the levels and that will stop people from jumping into the barn first um, jumping into the well houses it is it's quite hard certainly that ending I'd like to see the ending did you change that because that ending was brutal let's have a look I'll try and get down there yeah see so like you fall and it's just that stuff's happening to you it's so hard to to kind of take in the information and react to it before you get hit by something. Here's the fish. I'm not going to bother getting that at the moment. Yeah, it's still got the... It's still got this really crazy ending. Um, the way to deal with it is... See, like, I, I know what I wanted to do was fall to the right then while I'm moving down, quickly switch to the left uh, and then pull up a turnip, which takes some time and then use that turnip to destroy the thwomp looking guy. Um, it didn't work out that way because uh, there's so many things you have to time uh, one after the other for that to work out and it's just really hard to do. So I think to fix that one, you would probably You would probably. This is how I would, I would design that ending. Uh, you would probably do something like this, where it's like, you know, you're falling down here. There's your little platform, and originally you had it like this, where you had to do this weird kind of wrap around. Uh, probably just do that, and just have the flare fall, and then you could have. The turn up here, maybe enlarge the area so that the player is kind of sitting here. They know that they can have a look and go, all right, let me plan my action and then I'll perform it hopefully very well. Um, and they'd be sitting here, they'd know, okay, jump down, pull the turn up, throw it at the enemy. And, um, you know, take him out and then deal with the next challenge. So it's a bit easier if if you've got to do if you've got to do a situation where it's like okay yeah you know, I also need to remove that if it's like this and you're just like okay walk off the edge quickly land here pick up turnip throw it kill the the thwomp it's just like it's too much it's it's very difficult to um, I mean you know what to do it's just super super hard to to carry out that action um 
also I think like in, in that scenario too, you could make it so that uh, there's just more room. Just give the player more room, some downtime in between challenges, in between obstacles to just kind of chill out um, breathing space. Uh, Mario games do this really well where it's like, here's, here's a, a jump, where an enemy to deal with, and then here is a bunch of coins to collect and just kind of chill out for a moment. Um, here's, a, here's a platform where there's nothing on it. It's a breather. Take your time, recompose yourself, um, and then move on to the next challenge. Um, I think this game would benefit from a bit more of that. Uh, is there anything else I'd like to say? Yeah, the forest. Can I go to the forest now? Oh, I can go to the forest. So in the old one, this was like the last level. You had to get all the crows from here and there. Um, great opening scene. In the, in the old one, uh, you had to get all the crows before you could enter this. And I was going to suggest you can do that, but maybe like make it more foreboding. Like it's the, the boss stage. You know how like Bowser's castle in the world map is just like this really crazy looking thing. Uh, in Super Mario World at least. Um, and it's pretty clear that's where you got to go to, to finish the game. Um, it, now, now you can just go here, so it's kind of uh, not an issue anymore. This is a great opening, um, opening screen to a level because there is no enemies. You can sit there, sit here and nothing is going to happen to you. Um, it's big open space. You can play with this. Uh, you can play with the turnip. Oh, oh my goodness, you can move this by throwing it. Can you... Let me just restart this. Again, it'll be good to have a, a restart straight from that menu. Um, can I make this jump without using that? Yes, I can. So, the reason why I want to test that is I think that maybe you shouldn't. If you want somebody to realize that they can chuck this at this, they may do it. I did it because I'm fooling around. But it's more than likely that people would just kind of jump on this, get the flower, and then just carry on. Right? That They would do that. I'm pretty sure. Um, just because, you know. That's what you do in platformers, right? You move right. So I would probably make this. I would probably remove this. Or, no, this, this is what I would do. Let me go back to this screen. Whoops. Here's the opening screen. Um, I would put my little jelly creature here. And instead of putting... This is my, my player character. It's just here, right? Instead of putting the turnip behind, i will put it in front. I would put the flower here so that it's completely unreachable um, unless you move this. Um, then I would also put the vine up really high so that it's absolutely clear that uh, the player cannot jump over. I was, I was just about to play this for some reason because you know I was gonna play test um, a drawing on paint uh, anyway, so the player could feasibly, you know, bounce around on this, then go, right, it's time to move forward. Um, you know, I can throw this turnip, but they may, you know, not throw it at this and then just want to keep going. By putting this up, this vine up, you would be telling the player in, that if you want to progress, you must figure out a way to get over it. You can't jump over it um, with a regular jump because it's just too high. Now you've got a a flower here that suggests, well, hey, um, I can jump really high on this, uh, 
so I probably need to use this to get that flower. Why not, uh, you know, how do I, how do I get, how do I get it? How do I move over? So maybe they think, well, um, I better start experimenting. There's a turnip here. Let's throw it at it. That's, um, that's hopefully going to get them there where they start to go. Great. I can move this to get the flower. Maybe, maybe you got to like, maybe you got to move the vine over, over more. It doesn't need to be that high, but maybe you got to move the vine over more so that it's really clear that, um, you know, you can move this, get that, and then move it again to get, to deal with, you know, the actual obstacle. That's how I would deal with that situation. Um, hopefully it would make it pretty clear to the player that, um, you know, it's time to, it's time to move this little jelly creature. The turnip is behind the player when, it, when they start. Is that correct? Pretty sure. So the player would not see it. Um, yeah, it is behind. Yeah, I would put the player here and then just put the turnip there. Um, you know, put the, the flower here, up above. But this is really cool. This is a really cool mechanic. Um, yeah, and it's just really fun to... Can I kill that guy with the turnip? No, I can't. So now I'm going to have to move this guy over. I would probably suggest uh, minimizing the amount of times you need to move over a jelly too, because um, it does take some time. Uh, things are coming at me. You put a you put a worm here, and then there's like a bunch of other cloud creatures coming at me. Um, it's all very cramped, so um, just be mindful of that. See now I got a. Damn, I could have played that better. That was my fault. I just kind of rushed in there. But it's a it's an awesome level. I, I really like the ability to move the jellies with the turnips. I'm gonna skip that bit. I was a bit greedy. You see, like I wanted to rush that because I just couldn't be bothered. Uh, using the extra turnip. So, uh, ultimately, there's like so many improvements. Um, version 3 beta, beta 3, is, is a vast improvement. I didn't play this level last time. Yeah, so slippery. It's, it's raining, so it's slippery. Uncontrollable. Um, probably too... Probably too uncontrollable. Cool. How do you get... Whoa. See what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> I did not mean to... To careen off the edge. So slippery. Probably shouldn't be that slippery, right? Otherwise the player is just kind of like... Tapping the D-pad... But I, I appreciate, wow, that's so slippery. I appreciate that there's these different gimmicks to each level. That's why I think like the well level would work as a kind of just a falling down and, and avoiding um, enemies. But I, yeah, I, do, I do like the game. It's, it's, it's really getting there. Um, I wonder if there's anything else that I need to find. Yeah, it's so uncontrollable. I'm trying to turn left. For a longest, the longest time before I actually get start going left. Whoopsies, that was my fault. The hey, I, I'm so, I thought I was supposed to. I could like stand on top of these. Is that correct, or it's just not happening for this one? Um, the flowers are very Yoshi's Island. Yeah, see, I I really wanted to just kind of hit that and then go jump to the right, but the physics as they are just so 
so mental it's very very hard to not hit that that bouncing jelly um, and successfully pull off this section oh really fell off the edge there so physics physics could turn down slightly oh. so crazy oh there's a flower there too i like it's very yoshi's island um or you know like the the more modern iterations of of yoshi like the woolies world and stuff when you have a collectible that's that's um past the goal actually no i don't know if yoshi if Woolly world, woolies world yoshi's woolly world did that but anyway i i, I like it People rush to the goal, don't they? They do that often. Um, well done. Lots of awesome improvements. Uh, it's significantly better. You've addressed a bunch of issues. And when you, if you keep going, which I'm sure you will, you'll address a bunch more issues. And the game's just going to get better and better. It is loads better since the, um, since the compo. And uh, I believe at this stage, if you'd entered it, as it is now, you'd be shortlisted because uh, it's really good. Um, keep working on it, and um, and uh, I will play some more if you, if you do continue and you do update it. I'm happy to play more and give more feedback. Um, I hope the feedback helps. Uh, so yeah, I'll catch you all later. If you want to send me some games to play, uh, the ones that you're working on. For some feedback then contact me on twitter uh, until then until next time i'll i'll catch you later <laughs>